I'm just trying to go live one more time because it wasn't working to add Lucia, but let's see if it will let me one final time. And then I give up. <laughs> Lucy, <laughs> we are determined over here in this corner of the internet. Oh my god! <gasps> Hi. Hi! Hi! It worked! Finally! Oh my goodness, after like what, four tries? Yeah, that's very weird. I actually think it might have been my Instagram. I actually uninstalled it and reinstalled it. So for oh. anybody, if there's any features that don't work sometimes, it's usually due to the app updates. But I've got to say, before you uninstall Instagram, if you keep loads of stuff in your drafts, save them before, because if you log out and log back in, it will lose everything in your drafts. Because I've also done that before and lost all my reels that I had in my drafts. So just an FYI. <laughs> But we made it, and Lucia, yeah. thank you for joining me. Oh, so... oh, you're very welcome. I'm so happy to finally do this with you. I know, I was losing hope there for a minute. I was thinking, oh my God, this is not going to work. Uh, but Lucia runs the Blue Cherry Consulting, so just to introduce you a little bit to the guys. Okay. Um, brand strategist and marketing consultant, and I'm going to dig a little bit into your expertise and your background there, but if you could just tell us a little bit um, of background on who you are where you come from, what you're doing, and who you serve at the moment with your business. That would be okay. amazing. Okay, so I'm Lucia. I'm originally from Peru. I moved to England in 2001 when I was 21. Oh. <laughs> so um, I've been living in England for the last 22 years. Oh. And um, yes, I, um, I grew up in Lima, which is the city of Peru. And I live with my husband and my two children. Oh. Well, I have three children, but one of them is at university at the moment. And my dog Bailey, who's here, let's see. If oh, he to... There you go. Can join Hello. us? Oh, he's so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh. How, old is... Ooh, he thinks... How old is Bailey? <laughs> Bailey's four. <laughs> Bailey I love it. Four, Not three, camera four. shy at all. No, I know. He gave me like a nice kiss. Hello, Bailey. You're mega loving today. Um, oh, but true. yes, I love dogs. I love going to the beach and outdoors and exercising. So um, I tend to go to the gym on Friday, no, not Friday, Saturday morning, oh, and do Zumba that's and Pilates. Good. That's good. And uh, so, yes, that's, that's nice. mainly me. And, Amazing. Um, and tell yeah. us just a little bit about um, the Blue Cherry Consulting. When did you set up your business? And who, who do you predominantly help and how do you help them? Yes. So um, to begin with, I registered as a limited company, mainly because I didn't know much about um how you know what to do so i just got like uh, i didn't know if it was self-employed or, or limited company so i was just really excited i had this idea and i thought i'm gonna register it so i did it like i think in two days everything like website wow and uh, yeah i know i was like, like eh, but that was like really, idea yeah. to action straight away exactly. I was I like, yeah I make, let's make it happen <laughs> let's do it so i started in 2019 18, I think it was, yeah. and um, but then I closed it because it was not um, it's not a sensible financial choice. Yeah. Like I should have gone self-employed, so I closed it, and then I started um, as a self-employed in 2000 or oh, last year, last year in last year, yeah. March. So um, yes, yeah, so I offer brand and marketing consultancy services for business owners, entrepreneurs who want to stand out reach their ideal client and grow their businesses mm -hmm. but um yeah help them to achieve their goals so yeah, um i, I analyze do you know whatever their situation is and then i help them by creating actionable marketing and brand strategy amazing so good love so good thank and you so today we're going to talk about so actually we should say how we know each other because we do know each other we're not <laughs> yes. strangers yeah, on the internet oh, uh, so lucia actually lucia i'm pronouncing it wrong as well you need to tell me i'm <laughs> okay. pronouncing it wrong tell me off um but i think we are you originally well we originally connected on tiktok right that yes originally yes yeah, and it just shows you, though, you know, like, if you are working on one platform at the moment, that's great, and it's good to kind of 
you know, get really versed in one platform and kind of know what you're doing and reach your people and have your tone of voice and, you know, all these things in place. But it is also good to um, diversify as well and have your own email list we know and, you know, have maybe another social media channel because we don't own these channels. And, you know, the more diverse, diversify, how we can diversify is a lot better, mm -hmm. you know, for us as a brand. Um, so TikTok is something that I've been working on for the last couple of months. And that was amazing. To, I didn't know how... You know, I was kind of figuring out the connection on there and how people respond to you on there. And it was amazing to meet, you know, someone like you who is just like beautifully aligned human, so expert at what you do in marketing, that like has this incredible experience. And you actually came into TSM MM, which is TSM Money Makers, the membership. So yeah. we meet every month and there's a portal where we can kind of all connect and join together. And it's been amazing to kind of meet you and have you in there. Could you tell people you. like just how you found your experience so far, like yes. you know, kind of within the membership? Yes. I feel that it's a, I think it's a lovely, lovely group. So we meet once a month and we talk about different things that we are going through, yeah. which is great. And then and during the month, we can upload our questions. And Jen has put lovely um, information on the portal that you can access. So there are videos and you name it. She's got like lovely um, <laughs> Spotify music. And Playlists. We've got to have some, yeah, have some like yes. so badass Beyonce going yes. on <laughs> Yes, because Jen has a background in psychology as well. So she's a sales, um, you know, a, a sales mentor. Yeah. And uh, she's got, you know, got like 17 years of experience or more, I think. But she's very, very, very knowledgeable and good about what she does. Oh. And, um, and she just helps us to, um, I feel, I think the best thing that has, for me, is obviously working with you, but also feeling empowered yeah. and being part of a community that supports each other. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I'm really happy about it. I'm, I'm really happy I joined and I totally recommend it to, to everybody. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's the reason I created it as well, because like, especially for me in the beginning, like coming into kind of, you know, the entrepreneurial space from nine to five, I wanted a space to connect with people and, you know, also bring people together and for them not just to have, you know, not just to be speaking to me, but like have each other as well. So they could go away with other connections yes. and, you know, even work together or just go live together or like whatever yes. it is, but it kind of just creates that kind of ripple effect for people where it's more than, you know, just like chatting to me or, yes. you know, that kind of thing. So yes. oh, that's yes. amazing. I'm so happy to have you in there. Thank Thank you so much okay. and if anybody You're wants welcome. to ask me a question after this please do shoot me a dm if you have questions on this uh, or you're watching the replay back and um, let me know but today we were going to talk about attraction marketing and content and kind of really knowing your ideal client because i guess if you don't really know your ideal client or it's very surface level the attraction marketing and the content it's very hard for that to work for you right because if you don't really know who you're trying to attract yes. fully it's very hard to speak to them right so i wanted to ask you and, and just have a conversation around a couple of points there really mm -hmm. um so have you seen like kind of went with your work that you've done with people and even for yourself in your business like has there been a point where you know, there's really been a heavy focus on content and like getting stuff out, but without really having those foundations of like the ideal client in place. Have you experienced that? Yes, I have. I did. When I started my business, yeah. um, you know, even though I have over 10 years of experience in marketing and brand strategy, I think you just get too excited mm -hmm. and then you join different social media platforms where mm -hmm. everybody's doing different things yeah. and you just feel like okay i have to do the same i have to catch up with these people yeah. so um i started sending my communications you know my marketing content and all of it and i didn't get many results yeah um the reason uh, one of the main reasons and i think the most important one is because i didn't really know who i was talking mm -hmm. to yeah. i knew that i had the skills and expertise to share with people but i didn't it was not obvious in my content who I was talking to. Yeah. So I wasted time, I wasted money, and um, and then I realized, no, you know, I'm, I really should do what I tell people. Yes. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> Which, you know, I yeah. think it's one of the hardest things to do, right? It's so easy to help other people with these things, but sometimes in our own businesses, 
it's like we just can't get that bird's eye view and we can't quite like navigate it like we would for someone else yes and um and i went back to the beginning so i work more by brand foundations and really um understood who my ideal client was yeah and then i started changing my content yeah. strategy and how i did it throughout the different social media channels so not just social media but also email marketing or you know networking events yeah. where you actually go and see people face to face and all of that so um that gave me better results and um and yes i totally i i, I always tell people you know work on your brand foundations yeah and um and really be crystal clear about who your ideal client is because then you're not going to waste money yeah. and time or creating um, marketing content that is not going to give you the desired results. Yeah, because it, it's all, there's one thing like taking action, right? And I'm a big believer in like doing the thing, taking the action, learn as you go, right? Because you need to, to some extent, throw yourself in there. But then you don't want to be doing that for too long. You know, you don't want to, like they say, you know, throwing the spaghetti at the wall or, or you're just keeping running, but you're not getting any of the results. You know, there is a period of time where you need to test you know, and be like, okay, is this working? W or what is working? Okay, that these pieces are working, carry on doing those, but then these pieces aren't working. So let's change that and, and see, iterate it until you get more traction, right? And if we are talking about like identifying your ideal client, like really knowing who they are, mm -hmm. Would you suggest, like, what should people really look at? Because obviously people, you know, you might be like, oh, yeah, well, I know, my, you know, they're women, they're entrepreneurs, or, you know, they are service providers or coaches. Like, yeah. but what else should people look for? Maybe just a couple of things for people to really think about, like, have I identified my ideal client enough? Have I looked at these things? How can I specify further? You know, how can I make it more clear on who they are? Yes. So I think it's very important to obviously... To begin with, you need to understand, you know, who, like, are they male, yeah. females, you know, what, what their ages, that sort of thing is really important. But what I tend to do is when I'm analyzing my ideal client, I also analyze myself. So, and I do it, um, you know, like, not just like professionally, but also what I'm like on a personal level. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then I identify, okay, this is because it tends to most of the time our ideal client is a version of ourselves but people that are in different stages yeah yeah mm -hmm. so yes for example for me my ideal client are um female business owners or entrepreneurs that um are probably <laughs> in the in the similar field as me like marketing strategy sales that sort of thing but also creative yeah. because I have a really strong passion. I'm a very creative person. I, I was going to, um, I was training to be an architect, but because mm -hmm. I moved to England, I didn't, I didn't finish it, of course. And I love interior design. Like I basically decorated all of my house, and um, and I love that. So yeah. I'm very, very creative. I come from a family that um, is creative. My dad's a structural engineer, but um, you know, my my children, for instance, one of them is studying film production. The other one is going into an art related degree. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just live in a creative yeah. world. Like my husband is a, is a project manager, but you yeah, know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah got to have yeah. one more logical brain, and then you got the creative. You gotta have it. It. And, and, and it's funny because with me, I am both. I can be very creative, mm -hmm. so I love brand strategy. Yeah. And one of the areas is obviously um, brand identity. Mm -hmm. So I can help people with their logo but only after i've done all of the research of yeah. you know the brand foundation so that make sure that... fits, you'd say that's secondary right to kind of who who your ideal client is because yes. the logo and the branding is kind of, you know and that's another thing that that can happen is you go straight to the branding i definitely did yeah. that in the beginning i was like yes i want the brand to be yeah. like this but yeah. hadn't really really gone deep in but who, who are my people and why and you know yes. all, all those foundational pieces yes. so it, exactly exactly you know so it's not just like the brand identity foundations it's also who am i trying to to to, to attract you know yeah so who do you want to work with exactly. you know like yeah that's so important yeah. so um the type yeah. it is personality right isn't it? that's a really good point because that is that layer i always talk about the onion peeling the layers down and that is yes. you know, personality i think is so important and that's definitely something that in my business yeah from the beginning was always one of the most important things Absolutely. to me. Like, you know, with my brand, it is very bright. It is very, you know, because that is a reflection of me. And, 
And I also wanted to bring in people that like that, exactly. you know, and that align okay. with that and like to be a bit silly and have a bit of fun and have a laugh, you know. And <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But every, every human, because I, I was that from the beginning, like it really did show me, because obviously I've been in sales a long time, right, in lots of different markets globally, but in the online space, I hadn't really been selling. So that was, it was interesting for me, like with you, with marketing, it was like, okay, well, how does it work in this context? You know, and that is just like getting in there, getting stuck in and finding out what the yeah. parameters are and how you work with it. And that became very clear to me because I'm always very interested in other people, you know, the psychology anyway. Yeah. And because I did show up in that way, like some of my, I remember my very first client, she was so aligned for me, like as a human, yes. you know, as a personality. And I was like, wow, I think that was the moment I really saw the magic mm -hmm. of, showing up as yourself, selling as you, Absolutely. and how that did part of the work for you, you know, like yeah. with the ideal client. And I love what you said about the personality, because it is like, you know, maybe people watching or who watch this back, like write down the personality uh, characteristics or qualities. Yes. You, know, you want someone hardworking, determined, but also fun and, you know, or fun loving. And, you know, mm -hmm. what are they like? Yes. What people do you want to work with? Because um, you can really create a, a great customer base so you can create one that you're a bit like mm, I'm not sure I will. I'm not very comfortable in this scenario and it's yes. so important to do that at the beginning isn't it because if you like I have had clients that have you know they've been in business for a number of years but then what they've created doesn't quite feel right for yeah. them and often it's it's a couple of things to do with the ideal client sometimes yes absolutely so if we don't work with, you know on, on identifying who we want to work with yeah then we're just making communications that they're kind of like, you know, as if you're throwing popcorn out there. Yeah. It's not like yeah. you are like focusing all your efforts into one place. So then what happens is, like you say, we attract the wrong kind of people. And that's when everything just feels a little bit weird. Yeah. You know, or... It starts to feel a bit weird and you're not quite sure like, yeah, like, yes. mm, what's yes. happening here. Yeah. Exactly. So I do totally recommend, you know, for everybody watching this live or people who are going to watch it later, do spend... Um, substantial yeah. amount of time identifying your, who your ideal client is. So um, go more than, you know, location, area, age, all, all of that stuff. It goes more than that. Identify what their, um, what motivates them or, you know, what, what they struggle with mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So that's going to help you to, to understand them a little bit better. But like I said before, what probably they're going to find out is that their ideal client somehow is, you know, it's 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 a version of us, mm -hmm. but not now, but maybe in another stage, mm -hmm. or it could be in the future stage. It doesn't matter. But you'll see something that is like, okay, we're connecting, and that's when things, when magic happens. Like you're saying, yeah. you know, it, 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 you can understand each other, and and there's not like this awkwardness because yeah. when we don't do this. Then we work with people that just just the whole experience feels oh feels awkward. Oh, the business wonderland says couldn't agree more. Exactly. Yeah, Thank that's you for that. Katie. Yeah. Hello Katie. We love yeah. we love Katie over here. We love Katie. She yeah. is amazing. Yeah, and um <laughs> so yes, just work on the other client and also on the other, you know, brand foundations. They're very, yeah. very important. So um that will save you time, that will save you money and um and you will get more results. Yeah. Um in a in a faster way. Mm -hmm. So a question, because I was just having a look at what else we wanted to talk about here. For, sure. And just to, to get your opinion or, or a little bit of your experience, like when you were identifying your ideal client, like what type of person, like for you, did you want to attract or do you want to attract? Like, do you have certain qualities? Like, are they ambitious, mm. passionate? You know, like, do you have certain uh, things that you're like? Exactly Ooh. those two. And they're exactly those two. <laughs> Yes. So I ambitious and passionate. Ambitious right? and passionate yeah, yeah. business owners yeah. or entrepreneurs then yes, that are interested in in sales, marketing, brand, you know, or um or the, in the creative yeah. fields because yeah. of my background. Um and also people who okay, passionate because people need to be passionate about what they're doing. Yeah. When we create our businesses. You know, we're putting all of our passion there. Yeah. So yes, passionate and ambitious because um, this is really important. Sometimes I've worked with people, you know, and, um, and I've made a strategy and then they don't implement it. Yes. But if someone is ambitious, they're going to take that and implement it. 
So I want people who are there to take action, to make things happen. Like and, um, and once you feel, you know, that there'll be more of a, I don't know what the word is, yeah, like an engagement between me and the client because we're kind of like similar and that's where, where magic happens. Yeah, 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 totally. And so what would you say, like, if you haven't identified your ideal client maybe as well as you should have done, what are the kind of telltale signs that you need to work on your ideal client a bit more? You know, is it that maybe you're putting out a lot of um, content across channels but you're not getting back inquiries yes. engagement like would you say that's maybe one of them that's definitely one of them but also when you have conversations mm -hmm. you'll feel a misalignment somewhere yeah. there mm -hmm. and you'll just mm -hmm. feel a little bit um awkward weird i don't know mm -hmm. how to yeah you know that sort of feeling where you're like mm, i don't know there's something yeah. there that is yeah. it doesn't feel right so 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 it's like what you're putting out because it's not you've not identified your ideal client maybe enough it's bringing mm -hmm. the wrong people to you it's bringing well, the wrong and what you're describing you. actually is that kind of gut instinct isn't it because you're always yes. taking in these yes. little cues and it's so important for sales right if you get on a sales call and I have this conversation a lot with clients it's like not every client is for you right if you're yes. feeling those feelings yes you know, it's it's a good sign that okay maybe some I need to tweak something in your marketing yes. in your marketing strategy or the ideal client go deeper there yeah. and speak to you know yeah. exactly the right people because if you yeah. take on those clients that can create that really uncomfortable situation for yourself later down the road and it's about listening to it at that yeah. point you know and being yeah. like okay so if you i would say if, if anybody that watches this back like you're having sales calls or discussions you know in the dms and and it, you're like i'm not sure if this person's quite right for me that could be a good indicator that there's a little yes. bit more work to do yes. on the ideal client rather than just taking it forward and being like yes the sale because i know yes. it's very tempting right it feels good to get sales i know i've worked in sales a long yes. time it feels there's nothing like the sales high right oh, but oh, it's oh, not worth it if it's not quite the right person it no. really isn't it creates such a it can create such difficult client relationships down the line and you know working in customer relationship management as well if you can avoid those things that's the best you know if you can avoid them yeah. at that point where you're getting that feeling and you're like mm, something's not quite right don't take it forward it's not worth any yes. amount of money. <laughs> you absolutely know? it is it, I, I talk from experience as well it's not worth it it's, yeah. not, it's, it's, it's not worth yeah. it um because then and then what you tend to well in my experience when i've worked with people like that that i'm like oh it's not the best alignment there but i'll do it anyway because i want to help them i want to you know and then um, once things have to be implemented because they don't do it because they yeah. don't want to do it or they don't have time, they yeah. kind of blame the consultant or the mentor or the expert. Yes. And that's like, it's not my fault, you know. Yeah. I mean, an actionable strategy that you should have implemented. Yeah. So anyway, in my services, you know, when I when I do my services, like my, um, at the moment I'm doing one hour and a half intensive call. Yeah. And, and I, I've put like a free call, like a 30 minute uh, complimentary call after four weeks. So we can talk about that. So we can talk mm -hmm. about yes. the implementation and see how they've done it. Yeah. Because um, it's just very easy not to implement things. Yeah. Yeah. But so, yes, it's one of the things. And also I wanted to add something else. Um, it's not, it's all like there are, so, there are six in, from my, um, so I have a methodology where I that I use for most of my services oh, anyway, amazing. even yeah. though it can be bespoke and all of that. But there, I call them my brand pillars. Yeah. And something else that is going to help um, people who are listening to this video to make more sales, I think, yes, make more sales and uh, reach a bigger audience is to position themselves properly in the marketplace. Yeah. And yeah. to feel like, okay, so I'm an expert and... Um, and just trust them, trust yourself. You need to trust mm -hmm. yourself and think, okay, I'm the expert here. And um, yes, we can have a conversation and all of it, but um, just feel confident about it because yeah. people sometimes will try to uh, ask you for discounts and stuff like that. And, um, and it's some, it, I've done it before. I've, I've gone, yeah, yeah, okay, let's do it. Yeah. But then by doing that, don't you know, get me started on discounts. Yeah, oh, let's, let's go for it. Let's go for it. But you know, then you dilute your, your We'll be here all day. And, um, and that's not good for us. Yeah. So I have learned yes. to be more like, 
no, you know, there's the expertise and my knowledge and my time. Yeah. So I'm not going to mm -hmm. offer these camps. I don't offer these camps anymore unless there's mm -hmm. like a sale that I, but I'm, I'm not doing anything. But I'm like, this is the price of that. Yeah. Price. And, I love and, um, that. and that is hard to do, you know, and I would say if anybody else is struggling with that, where you're like, oh, I don't want to say no, because it's not nice saying no to people, no. whether you're not going to take, a, you know, go forward with a sale with someone or work with someone or in this context. Right. And I would say if you feel uncomfortable with the no, say, you know, say the no, but then direct them to something else. Yes. So if it's like, oh no, I don't Absolutely. do this, but I also have this offer, which is maybe lower priced. Yes. And then you can just direct them there. And then you're saying no, yes. but it doesn't feel as harsh or, know, or as uncomfortable for you. And, th and then you've got that lovely upsell, downsell. And if you yes. don't have anything underneath, you know, that's okay. Yes. Download, direct them to a freebie or say they can come back when they're ready, you know. But yes. yeah, I love that yes. because, you know, when we, when, just because someone asks for a discount, um, it doesn't mean you have to give one, you know, and yes. your services, your time, your expertise is valuable. Yes. That is what people are paying for. It's not the number. The number is irrelevant. It's all the years of experience yes. you've got, all those experiences you've been through, all the trial and error you've been through. That's what they're paying for. Because when yes. they work with you or me or Katie or who else we've got in here, her, uh, her Majestic, no, number one, you know, whoever they're working with, it's that's what they're paying for. They're paying for you and what you've been through to save yes. them time, to save them money and to get your expertise, you know, that input straight into their business so they can run with it, right? Yes. Uh, what did Katie say? Saying no is always orcs. Yeah, and it is, but there are those ways you can make it just a tiny bit better, like a tiny bit better, right? Um, and it is, yeah, it's just directing people somewhere else, making a recommendation. Yeah. And the same thing, that actually it's a great, you can apply that also, like if there's someone that you don't really want to work with, because sometimes that happens and it's your business and it's your choice. Yeah. And you can say, you know, oh, sorry, I, I can't do this at the moment, but I can refer you to someone who would be a great fit, you know, and you can just, again, it's just kind of referring them. You're still helping them. You're still directing yeah. them. Even if you don't give them a discount, you know, you're holding fast, you're keeping your, um, you know, the standard of your your pricing and your offers. Yeah. Because also you don't want to devalue your offers for no reason. Like if I said to you, oh, I want twenty percent off, you're like, well, good for you, Jen. Like, but <laughs> I'm valuable. Do you know, <laughs> you know, like why should you give me twenty percent off for no reason? Like, do I not value your service? Yeah. And if I don't value your your service, that's my problem, not your problem. Yes, right? exactly. That. Or and it's that's... something that we can also address in marketing and an objection handle in the content as well because you know um you know because your content it can it can be attraction marketing but it can also fend off people you don't want <laughs> oh yeah you can yes. say i don't like to work or i like to work with people that are amb ambitious passionate take action this that and the other and it immediately disqualifies those people that don't take action and you know maybe aren't along the lines that you want so yes that's marketing so powerful in that way isn't it yes. like you know, my, my background is sales but i've got say you know, they are very intertwined in a lot of, oh, of well. Of course, so yes, it's, yes, um, they are. Yeah. And something else that you've um, you have helped me with is with the um um do how was it? Uh, hold on, I'm trying to get all my because um, my first language is Spanish, so I just started thinking oh, Spanish no. now that I think back in English. <laughs> oh, it's Spanish, and we'll translate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like um make sales in a way that feels right for yeah. you and that has made a difference like before yeah. i was like a little bit oh i don't know i was always trying to under to see what the client wanted and i'm like yeah. this is ridiculous yeah. so now when i have these conversations and the, we, we talk about prices or whatever i can do it but before i used to get really awkward about it and i'm sure i've lost sales because of it yeah. and also something is if me particularly i really hate and that's hate hard sales yes, yes. i don't like it and yeah. i really don't like it I've, i'm not kidding i've been about to purchase services for like a thousand pounds or whatever not now but but yeah mm -hmm. you know in my business yeah. in my entrepreneurship um journey yeah i'm right at the end when you have decided that yes i'm gonna do it yeah if the person starts going on about um Oh, you need to make the purchase now because um you, you know whatever yeah. or even worse um oh yeah. your mindset you know something in your oh, mindset yeah. and i'm like yeah, yeah. i like I, that, that's when i got upset you just love the 1500 pounds or whatever i was about to give you yeah for saying that is my mindset you know it's not yeah. my mindset I, yeah. I will invest 
if I want to, you know, but it's just when it comes to that, whereas, um, yeah. it, you know, from the beginning working with you, you just made it sound like very natural and it's yeah. up to you. And that's the way you should feel because all the other people are like, not all of them, but most of them are like, ah, your mindset or you have fear yeah. of investing. And they're, and they're trying to, they're trying what? to get the sale over the line with that, right? I've seen then, a lot of that as well. Like, that's and, it, that's it. I'm, I'm yeah, going. and then yeah. you're out, out and, and that's what <laughs> yeah. we call the sales barriers. The gates are down, you know, they're not getting past you then. And that's what it, you, you know, we have that same effect on prospects that we're speaking to. You can trigger buyers, right? And not in a good way. <laughs> if you, if yes. you shut them down, they're not going to open up again. And, you know, it was fascinating to me coming into this space, seeing some of the big, uh, usually male, I don't want to pick on the guys here, but usually male tactics of big coaches that are trying to intake for coaching programs, right? And high price point. Um, but what they, what they often do there is they'll get people to sell for them. So it won't be them on the call. You know, they're doing the content, you buy into them. Yeah. But then you get on a call and it'll be with someone on their team, right? And they yeah. train those people by, yeah. via scripts, object, yeah. like hardcore objection handling, and they're not really taking into account the types of buyers or what different people are triggered by. So you got really triggered there. They tried to push you and that triggered you. And you were like, no, no oh, way. You can forget honestly, it, right? Yeah, I, uh, I've been about to, to yeah. do it. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And they've lost it. And that's, that for me, it. like hard, hard sell like that. Um, there's so many ways to sell it. And that's my point. You know, that's my whole kind of ethos of the success method is like, there's so yeah. many different ways to sell. Yeah. The way I kind of teach is what we call personality selling. Yeah. And it's kind of leaning into who you are, but how you're connecting with people, but also really intuitive listening and yeah. how you're reacting to people. It's a lot of that emotional intelligence. We were talking a little bit about yeah. this, you know, uh, selling to women and selling to men and selling as a woman and selling as a guy. You know, there's lots of different um factors there and it's about how they fit together and that's why there isn't one way to do it and that's why a lot of the time you know those big coaches that have trained these teams mm -hmm. these sales team people mm -hmm. it doesn't work because they've just taught them how to do it one way how yeah. to sell one way and follow a script and not yeah. every person that's sitting in front of them is the same so it doesn't really work it, and that's why work, i don't yeah. teach scripts and hardcore objection handling because i don't believe you need it to get a sale and no. if you're pushing that hard for a sale, is that sale really for you also? <laughs> you know, true. so there's a lot, That's there's true. a lot that could go into that. But that was a really good point that you made there because, um, yeah, it, it's, and thanks for bringing that up. It, it, you know, I, I love that intuitive selling, like, and it's, and I love that you've kind of taken that on and you feel like that's something that you can do, right? Yes. Because that's half the battle is that we feel so scared of sales or a lot of people that come to me and they're like, you know, I really yeah. hate selling. Yeah. And that breaks my heart because it's like, it's just people, it's human connection, it's relationships. And it's sad that people hate yeah. it, you know, and it, it's just really unlocking. How can I sell as me? And it can feel really good yes. because like, when you know how good it feels when you get a sale, right? It's yeah. like a total high. Yeah. But actually selling can feel like that too. Yeah. Like selling can actually feel like that, but it, it's just realizing like, how do I like to sell? How do I like to buy? How do people yeah. connect to me? Yeah. Like, you know, and how, how am I matching everything up there and feeling aligned with them? Because once you get yeah. that right, it does feel really easy and really like fun, you know? So yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's so okay. Amazing. And I, um, I think we better me. get off oh. now, love, because we've been on for ages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, but just one last thing, um, you know, I think... Um, I don't know if the word is, yes, not responsible, transparent yes. pricing and yeah. transparent marketing yeah. are so that. important. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to um, wrap up with that. that. Um, yeah, they're really, really important and they can make a difference. So transparent marketing has to be really as the word as transparent there. So for example, yeah. on my website, you will see like who, I, who, who am I? and um, my prices and what is included in the prices. Yeah, everything is there. So there's no, no surprises or when it comes to pricing, something that I've also gone through is like people say, okay, let's put an example. Is yeah. The whole thing is gonna cost 2000 pounds. Okay, that's great. Oh, I cannot afford that because it's very expensive. Yeah. So can you offer me a payment plan? Yeah, sure, this is a payment mm -hmm. plan. So then you go into the payment plan and, it ha and it's like, if you add all the little bits of the payment plan, it's like 2000. 300 mm. and i'm like that that was not written somewhere mm. so you know what yes I mean? yes I and that's a very good point transparent well. selling and marketing yeah, yeah and this is one of my real real bugbears you know if you want to buy a service if someone wants to buy 
coaching, um, I don't know, social media management, get your prices and your packages everywhere. People need to know what you're actually selling. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I actually see is, you know, like it, they're really clear bio, really clear Instagram content. You know, you can buy in really, you can buy into them really easily. But then yes. when you click to buy a service, you're like, you can't bloody find the service. Yes. Or you've got to wait four days and they'll email at you and you've forgotten about it. You know, like if you, especially if you have high level buyers, you've got to give them the information quick, got to be on the website. Don't hide the payment plans. Like if there's a payment plan, Say so pay in yep. full is this, payment plan is this, give the amount. And I yep. think a lot of people are, scared, are very scared of number, the number, the price. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's, um, yes. they attach a lot to that. And really, it's nothing to do with the price yes. at all. The same as in content. It's, yes. you know, what, yes. how you're helping people, the transformation. Same thing with the price. People, that's just an after, you know, can they afford it in their budget? They're pre-qualifying themselves in or out with the price. And I think a lot of people are frightened and, you know, speak to your experience maybe, but that if they state the pricing, people won't buy, right? Yes. But the thing about that is, yes, some people won't buy. That's okay. But the right people will buy. Yeah. Yeah, if that's people want to buy from you, right, <laughs> yeah. you've got to try very hard to stop them, you know, and hiding your pricing and hiding your services is one way to do it. Yeah. Um, so I would say, yeah, be, I love that what you said, transparency yeah. around your marketing yeah. and pricing. Yeah. 100%, don't hide, don't give people nasty surprises. Be yeah. upfront. Let, let them know what they can buy and, and yeah, show them the transformations in your marketing as well and like what, you know, what you can do for them. I love that. Yes. Yeah, because it can send people the other way, right? They're like, well, no, absolutely. you hid yes. that from me. I'm, I'm off. I'll go to somebody else. Yes. So it's, um, that, that's it. You just lost the client. Uh, yes. Especially uh, when it's payment. Yes. It's payment, you know. Because you've already it's... you've already agreed there. The sale is like 99.9% yes. .9 done. And then at that last hurdle, that last tick on the yes ladder, as we call it in sales. Yeah. Then you, you have enough to surprise. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. you have enough to surprise because let's say it was going to be a thousand pounds, but because of whatever reason, if you start adding all yeah. the payments, it's like one thousand five hundred or whatever, and it's yeah. like what? Yeah. No. Yeah. I, yeah. It's wrong. Icky. No. It's Not icky, wrong. and that's where the it comes from. This is why people the get ick around it. sales because they're that's like, Ew. and I get that, right? So it's um. Yeah. Yeah, transparency all the way. But listen, love, I just want to say a massive thank you because for persevering yes. so we could actually get on this live because yes. <laughs> it oh my goodness. for us. No, no, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much and thank you for sharing with everybody. So just tell everybody where they can find you okay. and okay. Um, how, how they should get in touch with you if they want to ask you some questions or they sure. want to work with you. Yeah, so if you follow me on um, uh, my handle is um, the Blue Cherry Consultancy. So if you follow me, there's a link there where you can book a discovery call to talk to me. It's, for, it's a free call, so we can chat for 30 minutes. Or you could send me a DM, and uh, there's a link to my website as well, so you, you have all the information okay. there. And I'd be more than happy to talk to you. Oh, amazing. And thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Katie. Yes, thank you so much. Hannah's on. We had her majestic. Thank you so much, guys. And yeah, any questions you've got for us or anything you want to follow up with, um, let us know and you can watch the replay again and skip over bits and jump in again if you want to as well. But thank you, Lucia. Thank and you I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much, Jen. That's great. Bye. And I'll see you tomorrow on TSM. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.